Hi, we're going to talk about uh, angles and polygons and also we're going to discuss tessellations. So first of all, a polygon is a shape that contains a finite number of line segments that you connect. And a regular polygon is a polygon whose angles are congruent and whose sides are congruent. Which means they have the same uh, angle measures and the same length sides. First of all, a few um, re regular polygons that you know and they're named, uh, they have a triangle. We have a quadrilateral, actually a regular quadrilateral is called a square. Okay, but a general, uh, an arbitrary, uh, four-sided polygon is called a quadrilateral. We have a pentagon with five sides, a hexagon with six sides, a heptagon with seven sides, octagon eight sides, nonagon nine sides, and decagon ten sides. So what do you need to know about the angles in the polygon? In any polygon, the sum of the interior angles, you can find it by using the following formula where n is the number of sides. So it's 180 times n minus 2. Okay, it's a pretty simple formula to use as a matter of fact. And uh, we are going to use it. So, first example, find the sum of the interior angles in the pentagon. So pentagon has five sides, so n is five. And then our formula is going to be 180 times five minus two. So it's 180 times three. And 180 times three is 540 degrees. Heptagon, heptagon has seven sides. So n is seven. It's going to be 180 times seven minus two, which is 180 times 5, 7 minus 2 is 5, and it's going to be 900 degrees. That means that all five angles in the pentagon will add up to 540 degrees, all nine angles in, I'm sorry, seven angles in the nonagon will add up to 900 degrees. Nonagon next, nine sides, so n is 9, it's going to be 180 times 9 minus 2, so that's 180 times 7, and that's going to be 1260 degrees. Moving on. If you have a regular polygon, how do you find the measure of each angle? Because the what we did so far, we found the sum of all the angles. How do you do it with a regular polygon if you need to know each uh, how much each angle is? So let's do it with a hexagon. Hexagon means n equals 6. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, okay, I know that to find the sum of all the angles, I'm going to use this formula. If I want to find the measure of each one of them, since I know they're going to be all congruent, I'm going to divide that by 6. So I'm going to do 180 times 6 minus 2 is 4, and I'm going to divide that by 6 and each angle is going to measure 120 degrees. Okay, Regular octagon means n is 8, well, 8 sides. So we're going to do 180 times 8 minus 2 divided by 8. So it's 180 times 8 minus 2 is 6 and you're going to divide it by 8 and that's going to give us 135 degrees. Regular decagon, 180, decagon means 10. So 180 times 10 minus 2 divided by 10. So it's 180 times 8 divided by 10. And that's going to give us 144 degrees each angle. But this can only be done with regular polygons because then you know that all angles are going to have the same measure, they're going to be congruent, and then you can just divide the total measure of the angles by the number of the angles. Sometimes you can do it with uh, polygons if some kind of relationship is given to you. So what do we have here? This is one, two, three, four, five. This is a pentagon. So n equals 5, right? So we know that if you do 180 times 5 minus 3, I'm sorry, 5 minus 2 times 3, that's going to give you 540. 
What does that number mean? That means that all five angles here are going to add up to 540. So then we're going to add them up. x plus 2x plus 100 plus 140 plus 100 must add up to 540. Right? So then we're going to have 3x plus, that's 100 plus 140 plus 100, that's 340 equals 540. That is going to give us 3x equals 200, right? 200, and uh, we divide both sides by, uh, but we divide both sides by 3. It doesn't divide, so we're going to get some fractional values. That is going to be 200 over 3, which is going to be x. So this angle is going to be 200 over 3 degrees, and this angle is going to be 400 over 3 degrees. Okay? Yes, you can express angle measure in the form of a fraction or a decimal. Let's try this problem. So find, we want to find all the missing angles. We really only have one angle given to us. Everything else has some sort of an expression with x. This is a hexagon. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six sides. Not a regular hexagon, so that's why we have to do it this way. So for a hexagon, 180 times 6 minus 2 is going to give you a 720. So in a hexagon, all six angles are going to add up to 720. And we're going to add them up. So let's start with 120 plus 5x minus 6 plus 4x plus 14 plus 7x plus 8x minus 8 plus 6x all adds up to 720. So we need to be careful here. Let's add all the uh, like terms. So let's start with x's. We have 5x plus 4x plus 7x plus 8x. All right, so 5 plus 4 plus 7 plus 8 plus 6. That is going to give you 30x. The numbers, we have 120 minus 6 plus 14 minus 8 is going to give you a plus 120 and all that adds up to 720. Subtract 720, we have 30x equals 600 and that means x is going to be 20. Well, this is great, we found the value of x but we still need to find the angle measure. So what we are going to do, we're going to substitute the x value that we got into our expressions and figure out each angle. So we're going to start here. 20, 5 times 20 is 100. 100 minus 6 is 94. 4 times 20 is 80. 80 plus 14 is also 94. 7 times 20 is 140. 8 times 20 is 160. Minus 8 is 152. And finally, 6 times 20 is 120. One thing that I do recommend, highly recommend, that you add all these angles to check because you want to make sure that it adds up to a 720. So 120 plus 94 plus 94 plus 140 plus 120 is giving us, I think I forgot, oh, plus 152 is giving us exactly 720. So this is correct. Okay. One other thing that you need to know, so there's something called an exterior angle of a polygon. So an exterior angle of a polygon is an angle that's going to sit right here on the outside when you extend the side. And one interesting fact about all exterior angles, in any polygon they are going to add up to 360 degrees. There are sometimes problems that 
they ask you to solve the deal with that. So find the measure of an exterior angle of a regular pentagon. In the pentagon, uh, there are five sides. So n is five, and uh, we have a total of 360 degrees between all five angles. If you take 360 and divide it by five, you will get 360 divided by five is going to be 72. So that means that each angle, each exterior angle of a pentagon is going to equal 72. Example 10 is asking you this, if an exterior angle is 30 degrees, how many sides does the polygon have? So you have a regular polygon with an exterior angle measuring 30 degrees, and how many sides does that polygon have? We're going to do the following. We, go, we know there are 360 degrees for all of them. If we divide it by 30, that is going to give us the number of sides. And that's going to be, so 360 divided by 30 is going to give us 12. So it has 12 sides. Okay. One last thing we need to talk about here is something called tessellation. Tessellations have direct relation to uh, polygons and in angle measures. A tessellation is when you try to cover a flat surface with shapes and you don't want to have any gaps. And uh, you can combine shapes, sometimes you can just to take one shape and use that, or you can use a variety of shapes, but the important thing is the uh, some of the measures of angles is supposed to be, I made a mistake here, supposed to be 360 degrees. So all the angles around the vertex are going to be 360. How does that work here? Let's take a look. This, these are hexagons. We already know in a hexagon each angle each interior angle is going to measure 120 degrees. Okay, so that means what? If you have three angles here and you add them together, you're going to get 120 plus 120 plus 120. This is going to give you 360. This is the desired value. If everything adds up to 360, can't have less, can't have more. It has to give you precisely 360 then this is why this tessellation is possible. So as you can see in example 12, you do not use the same shape. This is a combination of octagons and squares. How does that work here? So in an octagon, you can do the math. In an octagon, well, we already did it, I believe. In an octagon, each angle is going to be 135 degrees. Right? You use the formula and it's going to give you 135. In a square, as we should know, each angle is going to be 90 degrees. So let's take a look around this. What do we have there? We have two octagons and one square. At each vertex, that's what you're going to have. One octagon plus another octagon plus a square. What does that give you? It gives you 270 plus 90, and that is 360. So we got 360. This tessellation is also possible. Okay, and that's all we have for this lesson.